Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about episode 7 of Hit and Run. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So first and foremost, we have Segev getting away from the whole crime scene, having to leave Ron where he was, which obviously comes back to kind of bite him in the ass because... Well, Ron ends up getting discovered by like some people he had in, who were working in an area where Segev had to leave him and the other dude. So obviously the police track down. Obviously they know the connection to Ron, and obviously this ties into like right the other Israeli guy that they know was with Ron, and that ultimately helps him like figure out like right he's the same dude that was in the uh, vehicle with the van with Ron when he hit the police car. So that's what kind of ultimately ends up connecting this all together. But Segev's got to you know live with the fact is that he got. Ron killed um, Ron's dead because of him even having to explain that to his ex but she's like he wouldn't be alive like if he didn't get mixed up in your shit just like get out so and um, leaving that pendant uh, from Ron to uh, his son and just no words to say it's like your need for revenge you know it's like it's the people around you that suffer and have to pay the price for like he, he should have never come to the US but he came looking for answers he thought probably be simple answers he wasn't expecting to uncover a full blown international governmental conspiracy at play here you know so obviously he feels Naomi in about everything and he's telling her to kind of walk away but she's like it's not your choice but for him it's like I just got my best friend killed like I don't want you involved in this and she's kind of like I'm not going to leave you alone in all this which I'm immediately like that's exactly what Ron said before he ended up dying like sometime later so but then there's also like the moment they start kissing which he's like I'm sorry I'm like oh boy that's gonna get because the way could we dive into it a little bit later on when Henry was looking for her and it's the whole thing of like she doesn't like that Henry's kind of breathing down her neck like she wants to be like no everything's fine he's like no it's not fine if you if things were fine you wouldn't be like oh like turning off your phone because you think they're tracking you two you wouldn't be paranoid about the dude that's smoking a cigarette in his car like parked outside of your place like you wouldn't be on edge you wouldn't have kind of snapped at Henry the way you did but it's like because he he's questioned a lot of her like decisions a lot lately. I mean, granted, we don't know like the full scope of their entire relationship, but just in this period of time, it's like he kind of questions you about everything, the people you're hanging around, Segev, Ron, and now this. It's like he's worried about her, and even being like, you know, why are you so connected to a guy that you dated? for like a, a year she's like less than it. and it's like oh so but is it because they got up to some shenanigans because the way she kind of talks about it like either it's because they caught up caught up in some gr crazy situations and the fact is that maybe like Segev was that one crazy wild experience in her life that it's just like who he is just like he's very good at kind of drawing you into his world and maybe as a reporter and a journalist like maybe that that touch of darkness that touch of danger um is what's so intriguing so maybe that plays an element into like why she's like you know because they, she still considers him a friend because i can't i think just beyond their dating history it is the thing of like yeah they just are all friends and just the stuff they've been to because some of that stuff she was mentioning before about her ron and him maybe that was like why they were just friends like maybe it wouldn't what you know so like I said, I think it's just her journalistic instincts kicking in of like, this is such a massive story. Like, we can end up uncovering some, like, severely, like, covert stuff that's going on. So, but also knowing, like, Segev's in the crosshair, knowing that Ron's dead. So, of course, but it's also, like, you're not, right, not letting Henry in on, like, because I was suspicious of him. But it turns out, you know, he is just a caring dude that's like, I need to know that you're okay. I love you. And, you know. Because the way he talks about it later on, she's done stories like this before where it's like uh, there was a story where she just didn't eat, didn't sleep, had nightmares. He's like, I'm just concerned about you because of the way she handles her work. She gets too invested in it. Like, once again, a journalist isn't supposed to like become part of the story. But I think from time to time, she has a tendency to get too involved that she becomes a part of the story. She doesn't have that layer of separation. She get, dives in a little too deep. But um, all the while this is happening, you know, um, Tali is... Uh, contacted by a Seth and he wants to talk to her basically if he can get her help in exposing a lot of this stuff it will help him because as uh, he was told like was it last episode he's like oh you're being set up to be the fall guy for this because yeah this does all fall on you but obviously there is more going on here at the time because obviously like the Mossad um, assassin from last episode also the one that ended up getting away but like him saying like oh she was a traitor we still don't know what that I mean, maybe that's what, maybe it wasn't simply a, um, oh, she was a traitor because she was, like, like double agenting it, like I was suggesting last episode. Maybe it's just kind of like, oh, like, 
maybe it's just kind of he was referencing like, oh, she because the it, it subtitle specifically said like, oh, she was a traitor to her country, but maybe that like maybe it was meant to be like, oh, she just a traitor to our country or something. I don't know. Like I said, it felt a little double agent e, but no, like well. We end up finding out from Asif, like, the information she stole from him, because obviously she's, he's breaking down the whole, like, oh, him and um, uh, Danielle thing to um, Tali, and she's like, you know, how long was, like, how many years ago did you date? He's like, years? Weeks ago. We were still dating while she was married to uh, Sagath. And, like, once again, was that part of the operation? Was that just supposed to give her, like, a a reason to kind of stay and just kind of like I don't think that was a decision she made on her own I think she got close to Segev like once again whether that's part of the longer con or whether that was just something she kind of got mixed up in like she legitimately fell for him but then like Reese you know um Martin was kind of like oh we could use this to our advantage it will it will legitimize you being here in the country and stuff like that it will give you the perfect cover of everything so like maybe that's Maybe that's why they really kind of agreed on that, because like, because even Bill being like, not Bill, uh, but um, Martin when he ran into her in the past, being like, oh, oh, you missed a family reunion, like he didn't know about the whole her and Segev thing, so it's like. Like I said, I think that became a, oh, we could use this to our advantage after the fact. Like, maybe getting close to Segev, it's like, she already had to abandon so much of her life. So, it's like, why not? Like, I get to be someone else. So, like, embrace being Danielle. And I think she legitimately fell in love with Segev. I think she just felt bad because of all, like, everything between them was built upon lies. Because she wasn't even being able to be herself. But maybe on some level, she was able to make, like, it, it makes you wonder, like, was she, like, fully Danielle? And just what ate her up inside is like, right, I can't be Sophie Dreyer anymore. Or was it as Danielle? she was slowly like pushing out some of like who she was as Sophie able to kind of be herself in that relationship whereas Asaf he was just a means to an end but uh, the information we ended up finding out that she ended up stealing apparently is that uh, Israel was keeping tabs on certain American targets now they didn't go into specifics about who but it turns out that's what Daniel stole and now she brings that up to um she references that to Segev, and now we also find out like why uh, people have been targeting him too is because that information is still at play. She hid it to you know because all her journals and stuff she mailed to herself like a uh, day before she died, and so I guess that's how she usually like got like secret information out of the country. I mean, well, because. A lot of those books, well, because who knows, like, how, like, whether that most recent book was the only book that she mailed, because, like, Segev is showing Naomi a whole bunch of books later on, so the question is, like, were they all shit, like, was she taking extensive notes and, you know, writing all that stuff down and then mailing it back to herself all at once, or was this just the most recent one because she had previously mailed herself back? Because, like, her neighbor was saying, like, yeah, like, anytime there were some packages for her, rather than send it to her parents' house, like, I would hold it for her, like, keep it here, like... Uh, make sure that it got sent here. Everything else would be forwarded to her parents' house because, like, the top secret stuff is meant to stay at that because that's kind of her safe house to kind of, like, uh, probably m maybe even meet up with Reese and just, like, handle all, like, her super covert stuff because that's where her passport, her gun, well, passports and her gun and all that stuff was. So, so aside from all of that, uh, and now it explains why, like I said, why they're coming after Segev because they think she had the information. Um, because they weren't sure, like, how much she might have told him or he has some idea with. That's why they, the CIA probably broke into their house um, at the beginning of the series. Because it's like, right, they were looking for her notes or journals, anything about what she discovered. So both government agencies, the CIA and uh, the Is uh, Israeli um, group is, like, also doing that as well. Because I want to – because I – because I guess Mossad isn't what I thought it was because, I like, this branch of, like, who Asaf, like, worked for isn't connected to Mossad. I think maybe Mossad's a branch of that or maybe it's, like, a different branch. Once again, I don't know all the government, Israeli, like, government breakdown like that, so... Um, but that agency in particular, like, like they're all, like, aiming probably for the same thing and so they want Segev dead because he knows too much in many different regards, so... Uh, this actually runs even deeper. Once again, the thing of like not knowing who to trust. Uh, Tali can't trust her boyfriend, um, Omer, because I'm, I'm butchering his name. Because I almost want to say like Amir, just but it's like Omer, I think. I'm like I said, I'm probably like mispronouncing it. But um, 
Turns out he works for Tamir. So it's like, oh, cool, cool, cool. Can't trust anybody because no one is who they claim to be. It's like, now it explains like, why he just mysteriously popped back into your life. Like, oh, like, oh, now I'm so okay with everything, even though we kind of broke up. He did bring up the fact that he was like, well, I guess that's kind of his cover job. Or maybe there's some truth to it of like, he would talk about like private security and stuff like that. It's kind of what he was working. I'm sure that was just kind of his cover job, just like Danielle cover and everything. But it turns out. He was meant to keep an eye on Tali because, like, being close to her and looking into stuff for her would let them know, like, how, like, how far this investigation was on the police front, but also, like, probably, like, see what Segev was up to. That's probably how they were constantly able to kind of keep a rough idea where he was. Every time Tali would talk to him, I remember it was probably, like, like, uh, bouncing that back to Tamir and stuff like that. So, uh, especially because, like. Sergey kind of threatened uh, Tamir last episode. Doesn't know his name, doesn't know who he is, but I heard his voice was like, oh, you messed with the wrong guy. So uh, telling Omer to like bring um, her in, I was like, she's already on top of you, isn't she? And yeah, she's got the guy. And it's like, yeah, you, when you were claiming that you were looking up a recipe for me, you were just, you were going through my stuff. Like, I know. So like, oh, like hand over the gun. He's like, but don't worry. Like, if you go in with me, they're not going to touch you. They just want to ask you some questions. It's like, yeah, but she, it, like he said, she knows too much. So they're going to pump her for information. Most likely kill her. I mean, she's not working as a cop currently, so they can probably stage that to be like, yeah, there won't be too much attention, but it's like too much is circled around that family for that just to kind of get swept under the rug. But we're talking about a government aging agency that probably could. So, but along with like uh, circling back to Daniel's notes and everything, uh, Segev remembers like she was taking notes about uh, rotations that basically like. Uh, it was basically a code for different parts of the body, and like that's how like dancers wrote stuff in essentially a code. And so her journals were written like that. And he actually went to a um, a dancer to like translate that. And obviously, like some of the ones she did are weird because like some are used correctly while others are turned sideways. But the, they represent like an alphabet, and so. It's like 26 of them is like the American alphabet. Um, once again, it's so interesting we have to break it down to think of like other alphabets. Like, I don't know, like, like the different alphabets because obviously, like, things come in like different. Like, I know, like, Japanese, like, is a very, like, hard language to potentially learn just because of, like, the characters and everything. So I'm just, I'm thinking about, like, in, um, in, like, Hebrew, like, what are, like, the, what's the, like, uh, alphabet system like in that case? And, you know, even, like, Russian or something like that. You know, it's, just, it's actually fascinating when it's like, when you, when your world is only one thing, like, I've only known, like, um, an English alphabet. So, like, to know, like, right, different languages and different common, like, just, you know, once again, it's just, like, even in, like, using, like, Japanese, for example, like, a kanji, like, words can have so many different meanings, and it's just, like, oh, the kanji for this can mean, um, this, and it, but it can also mean this, and also, like, the Japanese, like, because there's also, like, there is kanji and there's something else. Like, it's, it's a whole thing, so it just, that kind of got me thinking, but kind of pulling away from that tangent, um, Working with Naomi, he was able to kind of decipher the notes a little bit, but there's also a ton of others. But uh, Henry called the cops on Segev because he had his buddy Nigel look into him. It's like, all right, this is what uh, Segev was up to. Now, what's really suspicious is his boy, Ron, who just turned up dead. Obviously, the police had just put a bolo out for him because it's like, hey, uh, Segev is wanted for four murders. Honestly, only three because he didn't kill his buddy. He killed the dude that killed his buddy. But even the cops recognize, like, oh, this guy's wearing, like, uh, tactical vest, kind of like, you know, military, special ops or something like that. So there is something suspicious. But also, it's like, you kind of don't feel too bad because the other two guys is like, well, they were hitmen, so it's not like you feel too bad. But it's still a thing of, like, you are, like, to an outside person, it's understandable. Like, yeah, you are connected to murders. That's why I'm like, is it something that can really even go away? Like, how do you even go back to a normal life after? Once again, I guess that's the whole point of, like, stuff like Taken and stuff like that. How do you just, like, disappear, like, after, like, leaving a trail of bodies you do? Like, maybe they've talked about that in other Taken movies. I think I've only ever seen Taken 1 all the way through. I've never seen Taken 2. I've seen some of, uh... I don't think I've seen any of Taken 3. I've seen most of Taken, the TV show that was short-lived. I saw all of season 1. I only saw... Some of season two. I don't think I saw all of season two. Let's get dangerous and all that side, but Segev tried to run, and even when the cops are like confronting him, he's like fighting his way through because truth be told, she still don't know who to trust. Like you know, but um, obviously Henry, you know, he was worried. You know, it's like his wife was kind of shutting him out, and she was kind of upset with me. Like you should have trusted me. It's like if he had filled him in on everything that was going on, that like yeah, you put out there like the conspiracy and stuff like that of like oh yeah, this might be like CIA and stuff, but like you didn't really fill him in. And if he had known like 
I don't know, it's still kind of a thing of, hey, this guy that's been hanging around my wife is involved with murder, so, like, I'm, you know, but now, like, Naomi's pissed because it's like, oh, you put him in a position, you put him in a jail cell where he's a sitting duck where they can get to him at any point in time. All they have to do is uh, hire the right person to, like, you know, slip something into the wrong person to kill him, like, you know, and obviously we kind of come full circle a little bit at the beginning where it seems like someone beat the crap out of him. Now, the question is, was that someone else hired to do that or did Segev, like, ask someone to do that for him because he needs to be in the, um, like, uh, the medical, like, room or whatever just to kind of get away from being killed. Like, so is that someone else setting that up? Because they didn't kill him. They just beat the crap out of him. So that seemed like that was more so, like, I mean, granted, we cut away from that pretty soon after he gets the crap beat out of him. But it's like, I feel like there would have been, they could have just easily have killed him, you know. Uh, but that's why I feel like that might have been something Segev set up. But who knows? We'll, we'll find out potentially soon enough since we've come full circle and he's in jail now. So it probably shouldn't take too long. I'd assume the next episode will be the episode where we get that scene, kind of get the full context of everything. But um, Naomi was asking Henry to like pull some strings because you know some people. It's like, well, will he be able to do that now? Uh, a lot of questions on that front. So uh, once again, what's in those notes? Because... Um, now, um, Naomi's going to be the one kind of researching it and finding out, like, what's at the heart of all of this. So, it's definitely going to be interesting to see where the next episode uh, takes us with all of this. Only two more episodes, so I'm um, interested to see what happens. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like to the force, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.